Thank you. Uh, so yes, this, uh, this talk is about how to scale your deep learning workloads with a Microsoft product called Azure Batch AI. So Azure Batch AI allows you to provision and manage clusters of virtual machines in the, in, in the Azure cloud, in the Microsoft cloud, and uh, allows you to run large uh, compute jobs in parallel. You can use uh, Linux or Wind Windows virtual machines. And uh, the real value is it allows you to auto scale your cluster depending on, the, on your jobs. So if you have uh, really uh, computationally intensive jobs that can be, uh, uh, can be done in parallel, uh, you can scale your cluster accordingly to, to, for the job. And you only pay for what you use. You only pay for however long your uh, virtual machines are running. So the, the advantage is for, um, for deep learning is that you can use uh, GPU-enabled virtual machines, and you can use any deep learning frameworks, and in, that includes uh, uh, Keras R. And uh, it's, uh, it's easy to deploy and uh, reproduce your work because you, you, you use uh, Docker containers. And the deep learning use cases uh, we can use Batch AI for our distributed training of uh, large deep learning models. Uh, distributed batch scoring and distributed hyperparameter tuning. And it's the last one of these that I want to go into detail on here. So uh, deep learning models often have uh, huge numbers of uh, hyperparameters. You've got the, the number of layers in the network, the number of units in each layer, activation functions, um, regularization methods, dropout rates, and, and the learning rates. And uh, to find the optimal set of hyperparameters, you, you have to do an iterative process of experimentation. So for each set of hyperparameters you want to test, uh, you'll train your model and then evaluate that model on some held out test set to find the optimal uh, set of hyperparameters. And one common way of doing this is to do a simple grid search. And this is where you define your ranges of values for each hyperparameter. And then you test every single combination of those hyperparameters. Uh, there are other ways of doing this, but this is probably the most, most simple and the most easiest way to, to think about it. Um, and of course, something like this is a, is a parallel problem because you, uh, you can assign each set of hyperparameter to a different virtual machine and have, it, have this process run in parallel. So uh, in this talk, I'll, I'll give an image classification example. And uh, what we want to do is train a simple convolutional neural network to classify the classic uh, M MNIST uh, uh, data set. And all we'll do is uh, tweak the number of filters in the convolutional layers. So for each uh, hyperparameter set, we'll train the model and then evaluate this on the test set. And then we'll find the best combination of hyperparameters. Um, I've left a link here for my GitHub page um, and this is where you can find these examples, and that will be, uh, I'll show that again at the end of the talk. Okay, so I've taken the actual model training script just from the uh, Keras R Studio website. It's the MNIST CNN.R example, and it's a simple uh, two-layer convolu convolutional neural network. Uh, and all I've done is allow you to pass in parameters to the script to change the, the different hyperparameters. So I've got uh, one, one parameter will be for the number of filters in the first convolutional layer, another for the second convolutional layer, and then another uh, parameter for the, uh, the penultimate dense layer. And these are the uh, hyperparameter sets that we want to test. So um, for the number of filters, I test the values 32, 64, and 128 for the first convolutional layer and the second convolutional layer. And uh, just to limit the number of examples and to fit it all on one slide, um, I've just uh, set the dense units to 128 in each, in each example. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to create a, a Docker image. And this Docker image will, will be deployed to every VM in the cluster. And this image contains all the uh, dependencies we need for, uh, to run the, the code. And uh, so our model training script will run in this Docker container in each node. And this is a much me uh, faster method than running uh, installation scripts on, on each of the nodes individually. 
To create a, a Docker container, we need to define a Docker file, and this will define all the dependencies we need uh, to, to run our code. So the most important of which is uh, CUDA, CUDNN. These are the libraries which allow us to interface with the, um, with the GPU. And this is the base image we use for the, uh, for the Docker image. Of course, we need R. I also install um, Miniconda for Python, um, the, t the Python, TensorFlow, and uh, Keras distributions, and, um, and the uh, Keras R library. And finally, I also install the Azure CLI. And the Azure CLI allows me to uh, interact directly with my Azure uh, Batch AI cluster. And the other thing we need to do is define uh, configuration files for our jobs. And these, are, uh, these just define uh, what the job is supposed to do. So in this, we define our node count. This, this is the number of nodes that we want to run for a single job. In this case, we just set it to one because for each set of hyperparameters, we just want to, that to run on uh, a single VM. And uh, we then define the, uh, the command line we want to run. In this case, we want to run our, uh, our model training script with the hyperparameters that we want to test. Uh, we mount our, uh, our storage. Um, so in here, we have the data and the training script on an Azure file share. So we mount that to all of our VMs. And then finally, we specify the uh, Docker image that we want to use. And for this, uh, I've actually created my own uh, Docker image, which you're welcome to use um, uh, if you go to my Docker Hub page. Uh, so here it's uh, called Keras R GPU. Okay, I was going to show you a live demo, but I thought there was just too many uh, moving parts for it to work. So uh, instead, um, I'll just do it pictorially. pictorially. So here's me. And uh, I'm interacting with uh, a virtual machine. And this virtual machine has R and uh, the Azure CLI installed. Uh, but this could also be on my, my local machine, and it would still work. Uh, and this is my uh, Batch AI cluster. And on my virtual machine, I'm going to run a, a script I've created called gridsearch.r. And uh, this will generate uh, job configuration files for each of the uh, hyperparameter sets that I, want to, that I want to test. And then it's going to trigger a series of jobs, one for each uh, hyperparameter set. It's going to monitor those jobs, and then we're going to stream those results back to my VM. OK, so I first generate, generate the jobs and trigger them. And then the first thing that's going to happen is that the, each of those virtual machines is going to pull the required Docker image and start a Docker container to run my training script. Then it's going to mount the, my storage onto each of those VMs, which includes both the MNIST dataset and the, uh, the model training script. And the model training script is going to run for 12 epochs, and then it's going to evaluate the, the model and then we'll return the results back to my VM. So uh, in, in this example, I just have a cluster of four nodes, uh, each, of which, each of these nodes has uh, six cores, uh, 56 gigabytes of RAM, and one K80 uh, NVIDIA GPU. And we can monitor the health of these, uh, this cluster on the Azure portal. And to set off this uh, example, I just run uh, my grid search uh, script on my VM, and that's going to set off the jobs. And then uh, when we start to monitor the jobs, and after a few seconds, we'll see that uh, four of those jobs will be running uh, because we have four nodes, and the rest will be queued, waiting to be uh, ready to be triggered. And then if we check it again after uh, a few minutes, uh, we'll see that uh, many of those jobs will have succeeded, freeing uh, more nodes to run the other jobs. And if we check again in a few minutes, we'll see that some of those jobs are a bit more longer running, so it's creating a bit of a bottleneck. Uh, but if we check again, uh, those jobs will be finished. And then we can stream our results back and check uh, which of these uh, hyperparameter sets resulted in the best model. And in this case, uh, it, was, uh, the, the, it was 32, 128, and 128 uh, for, the, for the number of uh, units in each of these layers. Um, although there's not really much in it for this uh, MNIST example. So uh, individually, these jobs ran in, at different times. And if we were to run all of these jobs sequentially on one VM, 
uh, it would have taken uh, roughly uh, 35 minutes to, to uh, train each of those models to, for 12 epochs. But in actual fact, because we ran this uh, in parallel, uh, we got that down to 10 minutes on four nodes. Of course, if we had run this on nine nodes, the number of uh, jobs we have, uh, it would have taken uh, five minutes 21, which is the length of time for our longest job. Okay, so that was uh, distributed hyperparameter tuning, and I just want to finish off by uh, explaining two other deep learning use cases which can be uh, sped up through uh, using Azure Batch AI, and one is uh, distributed batch scoring. So this is the use case where you have uh, a huge num number of um, tr uh, examples to score. Um, so m perhaps, uh, perhaps you receive um, thousands of images which you need to label um, uh, in one go, and you need to speed that process up. So uh, you can do this uh, in, a, in a batch method, and what you would do is just split your uh, entire data set into shards, and then you would distribute those shards across your nodes. And uh, you would then score each of these data shards in uh, parallel, and then just return the uh, scored data back to your file share. So that's, that's quite an in, uh, uh, a easy one to understand. And a bit more uh, complicated is distributed training of deep learning models. So one, one way of doing this is uh, to, in a data distributed way. And uh, in this way you have, uh, again, you have data uh, distributed in shards across the different nodes. Uh, but you have uh, what's called a, a, a parameter server, which is where you store the global weights of your model. And uh, each of the nodes is training uh, on their own shard of data. And uh, within each node, you're, uh, on each batch, you're computing the, the gradient and updating the, uh, the, the, their own version of the weights. And then each of those nodes will send their, their version of the weights back to the parameter server. And then the parameter server will uh, average those results to get the global weights. Then the global weights will be transferred back to the workers and the process will repeat uh, until, uh, until your model has, has trained. Um, so that, that one's a bit more uh, involved. And uh, Batch AI helps here because it manages the communication between the nodes. It sets up all the SSH connections between the different, uh, different VMs because they need to be able to communicate with each other to coordinate this training. So just to summarize, uh, Azure Batch AI provides uh, infrastructure to make distributed deep learning easier. Uh, it's currently in preview, um, but it can be used for distributed hyperparameter tuning, distributed batch scoring, and distributed training of deep learning models. You can scale your cluster as needed for the job, and you only pay for what you use. Thank you. I just want to point your attention to uh, my GitHub page where you can find examples on this. And also, uh, I've created two Docker images. Uh, one, is, uh, one uses uh, GPU, and the other is just for if you have a CPU. And uh, you can use that um, for any, any deep learning use case you want. You don't, it's not, uh, you don't need to use it with Batch AI. Thank you. Oh yes, do, do Azure Parallel. Um, yes, so actually both of these uh, packages use uh, the same backend. So both uh, do Azure Parallel and Batch AI both run on Azure Batch. Um, so they're, they're both different ways of, of doing it. Uh, but uh, do Azure Parallel, um, I'm not sure it has any uh, facility to do distributed training of deep learning models because I'm not sure it, uh, it uh, allows uh, inter-node communication. So if you want to do that, I think you, uh, Batch AI is the tool you need. Yeah. Have you also uh, implementations of smarter tuning techniques than just research? Because that doesn't really scale very well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. So in this example, I've just done the simplest example of uh, hyperparameter tuning, which is grid search. But absolutely, more complex methods are, uh, you, can be used. Uh, but you have you would have to implement that yourself and design the uh, the feedback loops and uh, everything. That's not, that's not like uh, it's not managed by Batch AI, so you'd have to implement that yourself. Uh, yeah. Alrighty, let's, okay. Uh, Thank you. Okay.